Excellent. So I feel um, honored to be able to welcome Celine LeMay uh, to give presentation number five, session number five here for VIDM tonight. Celine, Dr. Celine LeMay is a midwife for over 30 years in Quebec. She has been actively engaged for legalization of the midwifery practice there in Canada. She is the past president of Quebec's Midwives Association and a member of the board of Le Ordre des Sages Femmes in Quebec. She has a bachelor's in nursing and MA in anthropology and her PhD in applied human sciences from the University of Montreal. She has been teaching as a senior lecturer in the bachelor program in Pratique Sage Femme for 10 years at the University of Quebec, Trois Rivières in Quebec, Canada, and she has three children and four grandchildren. Welcome, Celine. <laughs> yes, hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good night. Uh, uh, what, uh, where you are. I'm pleased to take a few minutes to share with you my, uh, some reflections about the physiology and wisdom. So, um, I will be, you know, talking about, you know, our context of practice, if some characteristic of physiology, uh, and what contrast can, um, be uh, lived with uh, in the context. Why do we need wisdom? What is practical wisdom? What kind of challenges we can face with that? And then the potential of practical wisdom for midwives. So, so what is the the, the context we mo a lot of midwives are practicing in? We in in one way there's a promotion of normal birth as you know uh, part of the definition of a midwife we uh, uh, insist of the importance of putting the patient at the center of care uh personalized care promotion of respect and all that and uh in many jurisdictions and countries but we can see that birth is medically driven and mostly in, in hospital and characterized by routines, algorithms, protocols and guidelines and all that. So uh, we have the culture of uh, evidence-based medicine or evidence-based practice as a major movement with when then we see you have a, a lot of clinical guidelines, recommendations and expectation of conformity uh, to apply the guidelines. So it's leading most of the time to um, standardized care. So if we want to promote normal birth and physiologic birth, what, what can we um, see as a characteristic? So basically physiology is the default model of the body function in order to keep human beings alive and functioning. You know, it's not, uh, it's a little bit sad that we think that it's a good idea now uh, to promote physiology. Uh, it's, it's not a goal, it's, it's the, uh, the mean uh, basic thing that from the uh, evolution keeps us alive. So it's a little bit sad that uh, at, at some point we think it's a, it's a, a goal we have to attain. So childbirth is defined as part of no, normal physiology of the female body. So some characteristic is unique because each body and each woman as a person is unique, but each body is unique. Every surgeon and every doctor knows that, you know, it's, we are not robots. So it's, there's something there and there is variety. It's, it's always, varied it, it's a characteristic of the living so what can we see uh, is that we we understand that mutual adjustment of the mother and the baby during the process of pregnancy childbirth and breastfeeding the notion of endogenous competencies of the mother and of the baby 
uh, is uh, be such, so beautiful because they together they provide a kind of endogenous security for both of them. So it doesn't come from the exterior. It's not about uh, something else. It's inside. And we are uh, in a complexity realm. Really, it's, we um, uh, physiology is, a, is amazing and we need to uh, understand much more than we know already about the beautiful um, um, complexity well in uh, of the all the process so what what does it brings you know i i made some kind of table and i i'm worried that we um um we we put that in opposite but it's not that it's just a contrast so i want to to uh uh, explain some of contrast you know we are used to calculate hours and minutes uh, uh, when we're working but physiology needs us to take time we are used to do surveillance but physiology needs us to use variance you know vigilance we're used to think about risk physiology needs us to think about the potential <clears throat> we are used to search for certainty <clears throat> sorry physiology needs us to tolerate uncertainty we're used to treat childbirth physiology needs us to respect childbirth we are used to think about results physiology needs us to think about processes we're used to think about pathology physiology needs us to think about health we used to calculate physiology needs us to balance we're used to technological imperative Physiology needs us to relational temperative. We are used to control. Physiology needs us to accompany. We are used to think from simplicity. Physiology needs, needs us to think from complexity. We are used to procedural practice. Physiology needs us to a relational practice. We are used to best practice. But physiology needs us to consider good practice. And we're used to work from group average. Physiology needs us to work with individual. We're used to consider the body as a machine. Physiology needs us to consider the body as a complex system. We are used to consider normality a posteriori. And physiology needs us to consider normality a priori. We're used to use our gaze. Physiology needs us to be in relation. We're used to consider care as context independent. Physiology needs us to consider care as context and situation dependent. We are used to trust only what we can see or measure. Physiology needs us to trust women, even if we don't see or measure everything. So with all the contrasts, the, when we work, what, what should I do <laughs> when we are with a woman in childbirth? The, the, the issue is not about too much or not enough. It's not about just doing less intervention because there's a concern uh, in many countries, uh, there's too much C-section, too much intervention. So the people think that if we stop interventions, we then, then we can, physiology will appear. It's not like that that is working. Physiology leads us to a dif different place of mind, beliefs and practice. It's not about doing this or not doing that it's it's something different that's why we need wisdom why do i i'm talking about wisdom like if physiology is unique and varied the the care of a childbearing woman should be unique and varied with physiology you cannot push the river 
and control the processes from the exterior. Childbirth is a process of transformation and there's a biological and personal time involved. Each situation is a moment in the unfolding of an existence. There's two meanings in the, in the word situation. We are used to um, uh, consider a situation like it's a case, you know, it's the, there's a time, the favor, the, the state, um, uh, the pushing phase and all that, and uh, we measure, uh, but it's, it's different. There's an uh, existential meaning of the word situation. We are in a world of values and emotions. So, and we need practical wisdom when we navigate in complexity. So the simplistic, the simplistic summarizing of knowledge within clinical guidelines neglect the fundamental relevance of context and, the, and marginalize the importance of interpretation and judgment. No standardized care can capture the richness, plurality, and particularity of human interaction. When we simply apply guidelines or protocols, the woman becomes an object of care. This is far from the ethos of midwifery. So favoring physiology can put it to can and should put into question practices rooted in a technical and mechanical vision of childbirth. With physiology, it's about variations and human understanding. It cannot be encapsulated by universal rules. It requires consideration, judgment, and choice. So procedural plans and deconstructual uh, practice have to be revisited, really. We think that a woman is having her baby because we are there. We forget that we are there because she's having her baby. You know, it was a, a kind of shock for me <laughs> to realize that. It's like, whoa, I, I was trained, you know, to be a, a practitioner and do things and that and that. And then the woman is having a baby. But if I consider physiology, the woman alone in the wood, uh, even without me, she will have her baby, you know, and probably everything will go right. You know, it's physiology. So there's something, I don't know where we come uh, to, to think about that we are, um, necessary for a woman to have a baby but there's something when we think about physiology or normality um, that we forget so uh, it brings me uh, humility what is wisdom you know i don't want to um uh, to talk about, you know, wisdom, like philosophy, a big thing in the, the clouds and all that. I, I talk about practical wisdom. So it's very uh, practical. The Greek uh, Aristotle was talking about phronesis. You, um, you can have a lot of articles on that. Uh, phronesis, even in medical uh, community, and and the importance of wisdom too. So wisdom is about finding what is the best thing to do, to whom, when, and for what reasons. Wisdom has to be situated and taking in account the background, the context. So it involves deliberation and discernment. Practical wisdom is relation, relational. So practice then is informed by situated judgment of practitioners, sensitive to context and particularity. It cannot be decontextualized and replaced by general procedure. Wisdom recognizes the highly variable, non-reproductible, and contingent faces of our world. So wisdom is about responding to life challenges, 
It is about what to do in the human realm and its fundamental uncertainty. Fundamental. Wisdom is the capacity to act by mediate, mediating between the general and the particular. Um, it's the capacity for reason, reasoning that depends on the context in a way that protocols do not. So it's the capacity to cope with the unique, the uncertain and complex situations of practice. And it's about taking into account different dim dimension of, of, a, of a situation, which you don't have when you have guidelines. So nowhere, nowhere we can define correct ju judgment. And the definition of wisdom cannot be, you know, encapsulated in a, on a phrase. It's discussed uh, in many, many uh, community uh, and very disciplined too. So it's just about, I want to, to bring some ideas about the wisdom that can we understand uh, in our practice. So we can understand that judgment-based approach, approach is different from technical-based approach. Practical wisdom requires a situation reasoning and human understanding. It gives place to values, emotions, dialogue. It's the, capaci the capacity to make deliberative judgment and not calculation. There's an acceptation of the uncertainty. So being attentive to the process and not just oriented by the result. And the, the work of um, Holly Powell Kennedy uh, just um, uh, confirmed that for midwives, the process is as important as the result. So maybe we can uh, try to put more wisdom in our practice. There's many challenges uh, about uh, using or having wisdom in our practice. Because wisdom, physiology is asking, asking us to review our relation with uncertainty. It's the ability to combine both general rules that guide our, our practice with a more sophisticated, sophisticated ability to discern the unique characteristic of the particular context. So we don't have to replace rules or routine or general procedure, but they, they cannot replace a situated comprehension and judgment. We don't have to choose between one or the other. And that was my preoccupation by giving you the tables uh, before. It's not one or the other, but we can see uh, how it can create a tension, an ethical tension uh, for midwives that, or even doctors or nurses that want to, um, to favor physiological childbirth. It's not simple. It, it will ask um, a change of mindset, something, something different. So the challenge is knowing how to remain focused on achieving the good for individual patient in ever-changing situations in a context of institu institutional and systemic pressure. It's not, uh, it's not easy. So challenges is valorize good practice, really quantifiable and not easily generalizable and in a context full of best practice, recipe, algorithms, and protocols. We love that. But when we want to consider physiology, it, it's more organic, you know? It's, it's a garden, it's a dance, something different. So uh, the challenge is developing ethical reasoning and judgment-based practice in a context, context oriented by technical-based practice. So standardized automatism routine. So we have to change mindset, start to think that it is the person instead of the technique that is producing change. Routine can be beneficial, but routinized, routinized practices are more likely to remain unexamined. Uh, if, if everybody is doing routine, it will never be uh, examined and, and reflect. 
So we need to understand the strengths and limitation of evidence-based practice because it will never provide all the practical answer that we need. There's a strong uh, pressure <coughs> to conform to guidelines and recommendations. And I'm, I will not develop that, but I'm trying to find the links between this pressure to conform to medical uh, vision and evidence-based practice with the notion of uh, what, um, uh, oh, mon Dieu, <laughs> I forgot, the, the notion of manufacturing consent of Noam Chomsky. So for midwives, I think there's something there. Uh, so the potential, there's a pr the, um, the potential of practical wisdom is leading the way uh, to reflecting practice. We have re sharing stories and reflecting and learning from experience. It can help the practitioners not to be simply executive technicians, but to stay in relation in every situation. It helps us to be human. Practical wisdom will help us to enlarge the notion of competence. It, can cult it will cultivate a culture that promotes both reflection and ethical responsibility. So, and we, we can understand how practice uh, should not be constantly referred and subordinate to science because with wisdom, we, we have to work with our eyes, ears, touch, to speak with our heart. So it's not about just science, it's about human realm and relation and dialogue. So it's, it's quite different. And we can develop ethical competency in, in professionalism with uh, the, the, practica, the practice of wisdom. And for midwives, I, phronesis or practical midwives, uh, practical uh, wisdom cannot be explicitly taught, but it's a disposition toward practical wisdom that can be encouraged. Uh, it will never fully are being fully articulated, you know, as a goal, objective and all that, but it can be felt as a guiding force for midwives. And it can lead for a more coherent and satisfying midwifery practice. The will to promote normal physiological birth can be a path for an appropriation of a midwifery ethos. Being a wise woman, a sage femme, which I am, I am proud to be a sage femme because wisdom is part of my professional identity. So uh, it, it helps me and it, it questions a lot about how can we bring that um, of being a midwife, but in a context which uh, doesn't allow for um, ecological vision of our practice. And it helps us to be a wise woman and being with women. So but the practical wisdom is, is touching the art of being a midwife in a more meaningful way. It's a place for values and emotion. And uh, it may be letting the story working on us instead of working on them then we can touch uh, also the transformative process of birth because we are in the experience at that time. We're not, the, the woman is not an object of care. So we, um, practical wisdom, we then consider the dialogic possibilities implicit in the imp imp interpretative practice, dialogue with the patient, with the colleagues, and with others, it, it, it's uh, the, the, the potential of stories and potential of learning by experience, it can be shared. So professional competency would eventually include professional wisdom, 
So practicing professional, professional practical wisdom has the potential to resist to the standardization of practice and emotion work of midwives, leading to burnout, loss of meaning, and quitting the profession. So I have a few reference here. Um, and this is a five minutes old baby. And so thank you, merci. So if you have any question or commentary to share, I'm glad to hear from you. Thank you so much. I think we're all completely inspired and a little mesmerized after that, um, particularly if you've been in the last few sessions which have been talking about burnout, this is, this feels like a solution, which is um, really inspiring. So if anybody would like to ask a question, you can raise your hand, you can, um, we can unmute you. Uh, there's been some great feedback in the public chat. Just a few of the things that I've noticed is, um, you know, people commenting on this idea that physiology is the default and not the goal, just reminding us about that. Um, and it's just really some of your your I think your table was really um, powerful for a lot of us as well um, really showing that and the idea that it doesn't have to be contradictory but it's um, a contrast just to kind of check in with ourselves for those of us who are midwives um, so Celine I hope that you're still unmuted so you can just continue talking and sharing your wisdom yes yeah. <laughs> for sure Oh, yeah, it's, I don't speak about wisdom because I consider I'm wise, but it's, for me, it's like, it's a light, you know, it's a, something, a point of reference, and I have to um, listen uh, to what I know about science, but about this woman, and my heart, and my intuition, and we, you know, with the same clinical portrait, I would do something with one woman and some other thing with another. There's no um, uh, answer and there's no solution unique. So it honored the unicity of human beings and and me as a human being, you know. So. And as a professional, I can um, be uh, accountable for my kind of clinical reasoning, but my uh, what I my, my um, portray of a situation, uh, I I know when I'm there, you know. Uh, can I have um, somebody ask about the um, the reference? But I don't. Uh, I'm not able to um, touch the. Uh, Oh, you want to go back to your reference? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I was I was like in shock one years ago. Then there was a, a conference for doctors. Uh, it was in UK, I think, and the title of the conference was Medical Wisdom, and I was in shock because they were uh, r ready to discuss the, 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 the place of wisdom in medical practice be, for two days. And me, as a midwife, as a wise woman, I, I never hear that in, uh, in a conference. So I, I miss that. I miss that part, which just bring the difference. I'm not against you know, technique or, or medicine or science, it's not the point. It's, I'm in another, um, another world. It's going in another place. It's not fighting. It's, it's not about that. So um, that's... Yeah. I wonder how for those, we do have a few students on and those of us who teach students particularly, in, in trying to think about this pendulum, you know, there's this big push to evidence-based practice, even in midwifery care, to kind of gain credibility, to prove ourselves, to prove that midwifery is, 
you know, doing the right thing. And so a lot of that comes through research and really making sure we have the numbers and quantifying things. And it does take the individualization out of it. And I wonder if you have any thoughts about how to integrate all of that push for, for trying to put ourselves into the world of, um, you know, the literature and the evidence while, while balancing the, the um, you know, kind of our roots and where we come from. Yeah, it's such a good question. I think that there should be that first students should uh, learn to critical thinking uh, and not just be good girls. And evidence base is really um, a, a kind of way to do science first. <laughs> just one one way to do science, and and it's used to i think to confirm the status quo of medicalization finally and um I'm, i think that evidence base should be um with a lot of rigor uh there should be a work of deconstruction of evidence base because uh it's it's it brings something that is not healthy uh for, for uh, especially for childbearing you women you know it's it's it brings forward the medicalization of uh of a uh, child of um of childbearing women and midwifery practice so it's it's not easy to um to to, to go in that and to read science differently and to um not to oppose, but we have to go elsewhere. And physiology is, uh, can be a tool to explore a different way of doing things, just because of the characteristic. You know, it is, it's, it's amazing. And this notion of endogenous competencies of the, the mother and of the baby, I, I, I like that a lot because, um, you know, it's honoring these powerful uh, pa reproductive powers of women. And I'm not sure that evidence base is, is confirming that. I work with a lot, a lot of um, articles, science and epidemiology. And what I found is that it, it makes me angry, in fact. It, is at the what I call what I call the silent conclusions of a lot of research is that the women's bodies are not well well fit. Women are like uh, handicap biological handicap persons. It it's not working. You know they are too old, too big, too whatever. So it, it, where will I get the confidence and the trust of me as a professional, but on women and babies? It, if I don't have that, you know, the, the basic paradigm of the potential of pathology is so powerful that we, we, we continue to follow that. And physiology is like stretching the, the elastic okay we try not to do many things but we're not sure it's about beliefs so our context doesn't believe in physiology really so if this is it's a big challenge and i think that wisdom can help uh, just to to stick with that woman and work Working our relation with uncertainty and accept that. If we're not doing that as midwives, how can we help women and mothers to deal with that, our fundamental situation as human beings? So, yes. Yeah, excellent. I noticed that um, Irene, who's going to be presenting next, so she's probably not still in the room, but she commented that um, her work, I know she presented last year as well, she works in China, that there, there's a, um, there's a bit, it's a bit easier she feels when she's working in some of the systems because there's a fundamental belief in 
um, this physiology premise, like the holistic approach from the uh, from the beginning. And I'm wondering if anybody from the rest of the world has any comments or thoughts and in, in what you feel, Celine, about the difference in that. I know here in the U.S. we're so driven by, you know, social media, and so also we we have conflict with our patients who are also reading evidence and and kind of searching for the right way to do things and getting further and further away from this physiology themselves of, of trusting themselves yeah i know this is a um what what um one thing that is quite sad is that now as a uh a group, a woman, they don't trust themselves anymore, you know, to being able to just to protect and nourish an unborn baby and to bring him into the world. Uh, they fear and they believe that it's so, so dangerous and there are so many risks. Just the, uh, you know, the evidence base and all the, even the, the, um, we're talking and thinking about risk all the time. So finally, everybody is, is believing that is, you know, it's, it's a chance if we're alive, you know, after that, it's quite of sad. And my preoccupation is, is I can understand that a woman has a lot of fears about, you know, uh, the, the pregnancy and the childbirth, but, what preoccupies me more and if midwives start to have those fears uh so as a professional uh i don't i i you know i question me uh if we are not confident and trusting women in the processes why should they you know so um i don't know how we um midwives will build the trust and confidence in the context of medicalization and the 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 definition of birth is, is so amazing you know in the williams obstetric how they define birth you know it's it's crazy it's like the the expulsion or the extraction of a fetus of out of the uterus after 20 weeks of gestation so and you know they don't talk about the placenta they don't they, this is insane and they learn that doctors are learning that so uh, physiology um uh, it's it's not just physiology the the definition of of uh, pregnancy and childbirth is a medical one and it's 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 too poor you know the problem of biomedical knowledge is not because it's dominant it's because it's insufficient and by far to help us to understand and and work at the moment of birth uh it's a social and it's transformative process and it's 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 not anywhere in the books and in hospital and in the discourse uh so there's a lot of, of work to do so you know i i'm just try to find the potential of physiology and wisdom and it's is there a tool for midwives maybe to regain things uh about their ethos of their profession yeah, and you have a, a, lots of comments just really talking about the depth of your presentation, just really stirring and, and I think pretty moving for a lot of us. Um, uh, Lorraine comments that look at any pharmacological research or even safety equipment design, these do not take women into consideration at all. There could not be, uh, be an all woman spacewalk because they did not have the right space suits. So this idea of mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. paternalistic nature yeah. of, of this as well yeah. um, and you know even the evidence base with a lot of uh you know the the uh, recommendation and though those guidelines are not construct with women they are absent 
of the, of the guidelines and they, they expect to us to apply the recommendation it's not even built with uh, with they it will be built with women as patient as guinea pigs and you know where did you research randomized control trial but what about you know the ex existence uh of, of of people there's a lot of things missing in the, in the portrait so physiology is not just about uh, doing less intervention. We're touching something that is uh, different. Um, yeah. Oh, there's. Sorry. There is a comment that this extends not only into the the physiology of birth, but also into breastfeeding, and I would say probably mothering and the rest of our womanhood yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for talking about breastfeeding because now it's it's amazing. We the women have to take some uh, course and be educated. So how is breastfeeding and how it's a technique and you have to to teach her like that and she's stressed and it's a performance and breastfeeding now is the evaluation of the good mother and so it's uh, it's not yeah it's not easy uh, it goes um it, it's a lack of the internal yeah you're right uh key, the internal wisdom of the woman body <laughs> to yeah. take care protect and nourish the baby excellent well i i think that we um that we all just feel inspired and in an awe and we'll be looking at your literature and your resources and you guys um, that are here in the session, I'm gonna go ahead and 